Well, we have been commissioned by the Ethical Trading Initiative to investigate the working conditions in the garment industry. We have looked specifically at a case study, the case study of Leicester, because Leicester has become the largest sourcing hub over the last couple of years in the UK. We have worked with a range of uh, stakeholders in the industry, from industry associations, suppliers, manufacturers, NGOs, to local authorities and, importantly, with workers. Uh, and we have employed a range of methods. We had very good access to internal company information. We had very good access to workers as well. And that has really helped us to establish a true and accurate picture of the industry. Our research suggests that uh, the majority of workers in the garment sector earn around three pounds an hour, which contrasts with the national minimum wage rate of six pound fifty. Um, workers tend to be paid cash in hand, have no employment contracts, do not get any information about their employment rights, but also workers have complained about uh, very difficult working conditions. So there were reports about serious health problems, about um, problematic health and safety conditions in the factories, issues with harassment, bullying, verbal abuse. So there's a whole range of, of uh, conditions on top of the pay uh, problems that, that we've uncovered really. I think it's important to see that there are two drivers behind what we have found. On the one hand, there are large global corporations that do global sourcing um, that have a lot of market power and the power to drive prices down. On the other hand, um, there are a lot of regulatory agencies uh, from tax authorities, the border agency, health and safety inspectorate, trading standards, uh, etc. that have found it very, very difficult to enforce the laws and regulations that operate uh, in the sector uh, and uh, if you like manufacturers have to undercut regulations because of the market pressures they're facing on the other hand they can they are able to undercut these regulations because regulatory authorities are not able to sufficiently enforce the, the laws that exist it has been very interesting uh, to conduct research on the garment industry at this point in time because after decades uh, where we have heard about manufacturing jobs going off, off to the, the Far East, there has been a revival of, of garment manufacturing in the UK, probably surprisingly. Um, to give you an example, after 2007, the five years after 2007, garment manufacturing has increased by 11% in the UK, probably even more in the biggest sourcing hubs such as Leicester, Manchester and London. Um, now given the findings uh, of, of the research really, it's clear there are opportunities for the sector, there still is uh, an important skills base, there's a clear business rationale for fast fashion and sourcing from these close by hubs um, that can deliver garments into stores at, at very, very quick speeds. However, this industry will only be sustainable and probably possible, possibly expand, expand further if it is put on a sustainable basis. And that means uh, addressing uh, working conditions, wages issues, etc. Well, we think that uh, based on the findings of the research, any way forward really needs to be based on three different aspects. The first one is that government needs to recognize that lead firms or brands are not normal firms when they are driving uh, supply chains. They are very specific firms with a lot of power to determine conditions uh, and practices within the supply chain and in that sense the responsibilities of such firms needs to be recognized. Uh, possibly by legal means. The second aspect really is um, that wages need to be taken out of competition.
So wages need to be determined by minimum wage regulation or collective bargaining rather than by pure market power. And finally, the third element really is that no solution will be viable in the long term unless trade unions and workers at the factory level do have voice and are integrated into the procedures, auditing procedures, etc. that exist in the industry. Well, while our research indicates that uh, violations of work and employment conditions in the industry are fairly widespread, it is important to say that there's a good number of lead firms, brands, suppliers, manufacturers that do their very best to run their businesses in a responsible manner. The problem in the sector is that labour costs are a very important part of costs overall. So as soon as someone tries to pay £6.50 per hour, they're immediately undercut by someone else who pays £3 per hour. And that is unsustainable in the long run. It's a very, very difficult place uh, to compete in. What is important, I think, um, is that any initiatives that are taken in the future go beyond single initiatives and that there is a sustained and collaborative approach to establish a level playing field for those manufacturers that try to do the right thing.